might as well start in the east here. So we'll, we'll just sort of go through them one by one and, and bang out some predictions here. So starting first, we, we've got the one versus eight seed. We've got Milwaukee versus Orlando. You, you want to go first or are you going to give the host the privilege of going first? How do you want to do this? I'll go, I'll go first and I'll see your, uh, your wise uh, reaction afterwards. Your All old right, man what, experience what reaction. I, it's... See, it's tough. I like Orlando. Uh, I think last year they gave the Raptors a big test, and it was a big learning experience for them, being in the playoffs for the first time in a while. Um, but the Bucks are a whole different animal, especially coming out the gates. Uh, and in a bubble where everyone's rested and no one has to travel, I got Bucks in four. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and you know what? You, you kind of said it all right there, right? And it, they're rested. They're a well-oiled machine right now. Don't have too many injuries to deal with. No. Giannis is fresh off his head-butting suspension, so he's even extra yeah, rested right exactly, now. Exactly. And Brooke Lopez has had a great bubble so yeah. far. Yeah. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah, like you say, you know, I, I like some of the pieces that the Magic have, but the, the, they're just not deep enough, right? It, it, it's going to be a quick series. I, I think yeah. this is going to be a very, you know, take care of business series for Milwaukee yeah. here. I think it'll be a defensive series. I think they'll do their best to slow down Giannis, but the, the supporting cast will just have a have a field day with the rest of the players. Yeah, yeah. You know, Giannis coming off 28 and, and 12 in the bubble right now. So there you go. Uh, that was sort of Orlando's one hope was, okay, maybe because of the layoff, he, he, he's a little yeah. rusty <laughs> and whatnot. I mean, he, he even made the weird comment of like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm at home. I'm doing this, that, and the other. I don't have access to a hoop. It's like, what? kind of an NBA player doesn't have a hoop at his house there. Right, but exactly. Anyways, that's besides the fact he seems to clear be... hasn't slowed him down. Yeah, yeah that, exactly. <laughs> Definitely didn't slow him down. I, I've got bucks in four as well, too. Yeah. yeah. So, moving on to uh, your fan favorite here. We, we've got Raps versus Brooklyn. My Raptors. My Raptors. So, you know, in season, Raptors were 3-1 and one versus the Nets. Um, and, and aside from, you know, a, a January 4th, 19-point win that uh, they had, yeah. the, the Nets actually played the Raptors pretty closely. Uh, a lot of Absolutely. their games, you know, came down to the wire and, uh, you know, it, it, a couple breaks one way or another. Do, do I see them upsetting the Raptors? Not really, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I, I think it's going to be a much closer series than, than the Milwaukee-Orlando one, for sure. Abs absolutely. And I was watching the, uh, was it the Brooklyn-Portland game, where Portland had to win in order to knock out Phoenix. And Karis LeVert is a man. Like, he's, he's an absolute baller. And he really came out um, that game. And it's one of, Brooklyn's one of the toughest teams, I feel, to really gauge because they've had eight games without some of their best players. A lot of, like, OS three other players, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and Spencer Dinwiddie, uh, I don't know if I'm missing any, aren't playing in the bubble. They've chosen to stay away from that. now. And, but now they're left with a certain number of guys, and at the same time, they've sustained their, their level of play, and they've made the playoffs. So I, def, I personally think they'll be able to take a couple of games off the Raptors. I think I'm going to go with Raps in five. Yeah. I was yeah. going to say six, but I think, I think five just because they're, they're thin. You know, they're, they're, with the lack of players, they're still thin. Yeah, well, you know, th that's just it, right? Is uh, they're, they're such a strange team, and, and you know, Karis LeVert is the prime example, right? When, yeah. when Kyrie's not playing, he's a completely different player. When he's oh, yeah. on the floor, it, it's, you know, what do you do with him? Because he's not getting the touches, he's not getting the minutes he yeah. wants. He's a, he's a very ball-dominant player. Like, he needs to score, he's a score. That Carmelo Anthony-type uh, player where you need the ball and you need to have it at half court, and that's yeah. when you start doing your work. Uh, and, and the Raptors have had a great bubble. Uh, you know, they've had that one loss against uh, Boston. But other than that, they've been completely dominant, beating really good teams. And they don't have any injuries. They've uh, rested their players in the last few games, given their seating um, being fixed. So, yeah, Raps in five. I think Brooklyn will take one game just out of that youthful energy. Yeah, uh, I've got the same thing. I've got Raps in five. I, I, I'm more curious coming out of this next year when, you know, you do get KD and Kyrie back as well. That's what they're waiting for, exactly. What, what, what's this team going to look like? Is is yep. Karras even going to be a part of that? Or have they sort of realized that, you know, the, the, this world of him and Kyrie coexisting might not, you know, actually pan out how they plan there too. And just like you said, the, the Raps are just so deep, right? Like exactly. you look at even some of the last couple of games where they have been resting their start. Like their, their bench is playing extended periods of time and still outscoring the opponents, right? Oh, so yeah. like, what was it? Stanley Johnson dropped 20 plus points against in the last game uh, and a game the winner. And, every night. Right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. And and yeah, they're, they're, they're just so well coached. You know, the, the, the biggest robbery of this entire bubble season was Nick Nurse not winning coach of the year because when yeah. – 
Absolutely. you know, you, you put up your, your, the franchise's best winning percentage ever yeah. after yeah. losing, you know, the, the franchise player in, right. in Kawhi. And, you know, it, and the it, emergence it, of Fred Van Vliet, the emergence of, of Siakam and the, the sustainability of Lowry as well, which is also a challenge with him being older. Yeah. is super, super impressive. But uh, just like, just, you know, typical North side, uh, you know, respect that we get. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, I mean, the the only sort of question mark that uh, that I saw too was, you know, Pascal looked a little rusty. He, he did. He w- did. wasn't uh, putting up his his normal numbers there. Hopefully, he's able to shake that off fairly quickly. And you know that that's why you know you never like to say this is a tune up series because these are professional athletes. Well, here, exactly. But, you know, yeah. I, I I think put a gun to most people's heads and, and they're picking raps in this series. So hopefully, he gets it together. Absolutely, absolutely. I don't think the the, the Nets will be a, a just a walkover. Yeah. I definitely think they will put up a fight. Um, but yeah, as I said, just the the lack of assets that they have to throw at the Raptors. The Raptors just outnumber them in every category. Yeah, yeah. All right. So Boston versus Philly. I'll, I'll let you go first here. What what, what do you yeah. see in this series? This is a really interesting series, and I think it. I think my answer would have been different had Ben Simmons been healthy. I think the loss to Ben Simmons is a big one on a defensive end, on the defensive end, especially Mm -hmm. Uh, we all know his, his offensive woes uh, hasn't really evolved as an offensive player as everyone thought he would. Um, But I don't think that the Sixers are out of it. I think they're a very, very deep team. And I think Boston is in for a very, very difficult time. Um, they do have a lot of players that have been inconsistent. Yeah, Jason Tatum starting the bubble really poorly, then picking it up against the Raptors. And you have Jalen Brown sort of go, talking about the struggles of being in a bubble with his mental health and everything and trying to get away from basketball sometimes. So they have a lot happening in the, in, within their circle. Um, whereas, I mean, the Sixers do as well. I just think the Sixers are more – have been through that, that tough time. They had that Jimmy Butler phase. They've had that um, – that Joel Embiid being a full character phase. They know what it's like to be in a playoff series and, and struggle. But uh, I'm going to go – I'll go with uh, Boston in seven. Okay. All right. So, you know what? That's exactly it, right, is had Simmons been healthy, this yeah. is a very different looking series, right? And, yeah. you know, even going back to the regular season, pre-bubble and everything, you know, Philly took three out of four against Boston, yeah. right? And, you know – had this been under sort of normal circumstances there, you, you might even give the edge to Philly. At this oh, absolutely. Yeah, the home court advantage and their well, – Well, that's just it. They've only lost, like, what, four or five games at, at home this yeah. year? But for some reason on, on the road, they're, they're just a completely different <laughs> animal. But, yeah. you know, even going back to the last time that these two teams met in the playoffs, right, you, you, you could see it. that There's zero respect for Simmons shooting. And oh, yeah. It's well documented so. <laughs> all of his three-point woes there but you actually look at the tape and that was what really turned the series right because they literally just cheated on defense and just yep. did it was four on five on the, offense for the for the sixers like well, they, they had to play with four men did, they didn't chase them to the perimeter they clogged the paint and by doing that you're you're now affecting mb as well too right so exactly. it's, you're, you're almost getting a two for one special there because you know if, if he does pull up and shoot great yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and if not right you, you're just clogging the paint so it's going to be definitely different um you know but the, the the one sort of wrinkle that'll be interesting to see is you know it, it who they do trot out there to replace Simmons, right? Is it going to yeah. be a shooter? Is it going to be, yeah. you know, more more of a game manager, right? And they've got some options as far as, you know, they've got some journeymen on that team, and they've also got some rookies as well. Absolutely. Too. And, and they, serviceable rookies as well. Absolutely. So they can give them a couple different looks, but, you know, I, I think it'll be interesting because they're not going to be able to cheat and do the same blueprint that got yeah. them past the Sixers last time. Right. Yeah. So uh, at the end of the day, you know, I, I see Celtics in six. I, I think it's going to be a hard fought series. I think there's going to be a lot of, uh, you know, wars going on in the paint down low. But Absolutely. at the end of the day, right, Simmons was probably going to be the one to cover Tatum. Right. Yeah, so exactly. losing your best defender on the guy that he was probably going to be covering too. Like it would be yeah. one thing if, it, if it, you know, Boston had this giant dominating center and it's like, okay, yeah. we just match him up with Embiid and away we go. Right. But you know, is Al Horford or Harris going to be chasing him around the perimeter or right. is it going to fall to a, a rookie who's, you know, getting their first taste exactly. of playoff experience. So I think just that alone gives them a little bit of that edge and uh, absolutely. 
you know, Celtics, the, their first year with Tatum there, they, they went on such a deep run. They, they've got those playoff reps as well, too. So yeah. I, I, I see Celtics in six there, but and if I it think, goes seven, I wouldn't be surprised either. Yeah, and, and I think the bubble, the situation with the bubble, because the games that they're playing that are regular season games now, I, I don't foresee the NBA doing anything special for the playoffs and changing the atmosphere of the courts, which I think, falls into Boston's advantage. We're talking about this, the, the Sixers' um, home court advantage. They don't have that now. And games look, maybe won't feel, but they definitely look the exact same as you're playing in the season, which I think lowers a lot of the intensity, which, uh, intensity and emotion, which the Sixers love. They love that Joel Embiid emotion that shows up. They love that, um, well, they love that Jimmy Butler when he was around, even Ben Simmons getting riled up. You know, that's what they sort of live off of that that doggy the doggy style yeah. uh, of uh, of a basketball, you know. But yeah, um, yeah. yeah I definitely think uh, the Celtics. Well, are well come you even look at Embiid. Like two separate times, he got injured in the bubble. So it's like, how healthy yeah. is he going to be in in that's right. a potential seven game series as well, too? Absolutely. When they're going to be looking at him to do everything more, not just on the offensive side, but defensive side yeah. and everything else in between, right? Absolutely. So. Something about this this time of year, the playoff time of year, Joel Embiid just has something come up. Last year was the flu or something like that. I remember playing against the Raptors. And yeah. was, something's always up with him. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So our, our last series in the East here, we, we've got Indiana versus Miami. So, uh, I mean, Miami took the season series three to one. Uh, they, they split in the bubble, but really that second time they met, both teams were kind of resting most of their starters. So, yeah. you know, how much you can really take away from that one, who knows, right? Absolutely. But what, what I think will be really interesting, and, you know, Jimmy Butler came out and, and said that, yeah. oh, my feud with, uh, you know, Warren, it's dead, it's nothing, it's da 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 Okay, you, you, for, first of all, I don't believe you. <laughs> yeah. But, oh, yeah. But, but second of all, even if it was dead, right, at what point in the series does it flare up again? Because if you're just playing right. them once – Okay, whatever. Say you don't see you don't see until later. Exactly. <laughs> like if this thing goes seven, the, these two guys are gonna be you know all over each other in each other's face, right? You know, TJ had himself a bubble though, like all NBA oh, first yeah. team nominated for MVP. Yeah, thirty-one yeah. points and six rebounds per game, right? Like, and even going back to what you were saying about Philadelphia and the, their lack of a home court advantage there. I, I see Indiana really, you know, getting hurt by that one as well. Too, Absolutely. They've got a fairly raucous crowd up there. And, you know, Indiana, they take the group seriously, right? Oh, so, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I would have more faith in them if this was actually played in front of a crowd, I think. Yeah. And like you say, they can pump whatever noise they want into the gyms there at the end of the exactly. day. It's like you almost got that sort of, you know, like Drew League feel of exactly. runs, right? Yeah. And, and we've noticed that line. even in the season. Like, uh, we've noticed some, a bit of, like, the lack of intensity is, is shown for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and, you know, at the end of the day, like, they were 20 and 17 on the road. So, yeah. they were barely a 500 team. Yeah. So th they really did rely on that home court. So Absolutely. at the end of the day, I I'm going to say Miami and six here. Miami and six. Yeah, I think, well, this is one of those series, and I think this is probably one of the top three or four series uh, coming into the first round of the playoffs this year for the NBA, given the storylines as well with uh, Jimmy Butler and TJ Warren, of course. But you got to look at the best player in the series. And in, and it, yes, in the bubble, it, w it was TJ Warren, but I'm talking about a bona fide superstar and Jimmy Butler. I think he's obviously – head and shoulders above every other player in this series. And I think that's where you have to give Miami the edge. Um, and Victor Lodipo has had a decent bubble. Hasn't been, has been almost a shell of his old self after the injury coming back. Um, he was even questionable of even returning to the bubble in the first place and decided to. Um, and, and, and he hasn't been much of that. And part of the reason why TJ Warren has been so good is because he's literally had 90% of the scoring load. When you're given so many shots, you're going to score some and your numbers will be inflated. And I think that will not work in the playoffs against a very well coached um, and even and a well polished uh, Miami team who's got really solid defenders, especially after the trade deadline moves that they made earlier in the year. So I don't see Indiana squeezing out of this. Um, I do see it being a close series. I got Miami in five. Oh, so not as close of a series then. Uh, not, 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 not as close, but, yeah. I don't, but I don't think any games will be blowouts. I think yeah. they'll be all super close games. Jimmy Butler might hit a, a couple dagger threes. Maybe TJ Warren will get one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Well, yeah, like you say, I, I think they're going to be close games as well, too, because, you know, I think Indiana... They're very similar teams. Like, they're very... Not, they don't have that uh, superstar. They, they're, yeah. they're all-star. They have very solid players. Um, they're both solid across the board, right? Exactly. And, exactly. And yeah. Defensively as well, too. Like, Indiana, I think, was in top three in, in points per game given up, right? Like, they, yeah. behind, uh, what, I think it was like the Raps. All right, hopping over to the West here. So, we, we've got Lakers versus Portland here. <laughs> Very interested to see what your take on this is here. Now, <laughs> the, the big question is, how much does Damian Lillard have left in the tank? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the Portland train goes only as far as Damian Lillard goes. Yeah. And um, that's what got them into the playoffs. And that's what's going to keep them in the playoffs. Um, I think that in every other – I think on especially in the wing area, uh, Portland struggles. CJ McCollum has the tendency to drift in and out of games. Uh, Gary Trent Jr. just broke out in this bubble. Um, and I'm thinking of other, other guards that are around. None of them really pop up in my mind as real game changers. And that's where I think the Lakers will have a field day. You know, even if LeBron does play the point, you have guys like, you have guys like uh, Alex Caruso, for example, a really solid slasher. Um, even Deion Waiters and, and, and J.R. Smith, who get hot, there's microwaves, you know, that, uh, that'll that present issues. So it's not – like, I love what the Portland Trailblazers have done, this bubble. I think their story is incredible. Um, they they went – they beat all odds. But it really is a one-man show. And uh, I got Lakers in five. Lakers in five. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, talk about – two teams heading in sort of different directions though, right? Absolutely. Like, oh, yeah. like Lake, Lakers came in, they, they got their wins, they locked up the first seat and, and they kind of just threw it in neutral, right? Oh yeah. And, yeah. and even in the games that they were, you know, needing to win to, to secure that number one seed yeah. and all that, there are even the long stretches of time where they just looked flat and frankly disinterested. Yeah. And, you know, even had LeBron with that sort of LeBron did, interview as far as, yeah, we've got some off-court stuff. I'm not going to talk about it, but there's some off-court issues and da da da, da. And so, yeah, it, 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 it's not your typical one versus eight, right? Where That's you can just say, good. all right, yeah, get four, five at the most, right? Pack it in, yep. <laughs> and on the other hand, you've got Portland who, like, every game that was a must win game every single mm-hmm. game that they had was like super close and oh yeah know, making giant comebacks in most of them right like it's, oh, it's yeah. not like from the opening tip they, they were running rough shot over the oh no teams. They, they dug themselves into holes and had to pick themselves up exactly right and you know you've got the hottest player on the planet right now for portland it, yeah. you know <laughs> just took home bubble mvp with 37.6 <laughs> points a game and 9.6 assists right so he's yeah. he's pulling up from half court at the logo and, logo lillard is his new name that's what they're calling oh, him <laughs> earning himself a few nicknames in this oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. wild right so i mean it, it's the classic debate of would you rather your team be rested or on a hot streak. Hot streak, exactly. Right? And, and that's exactly what's going on here. Now, at the end of the day, though, do, do I see Portland actually upsetting the Lakers? Not really. Would, would I be absolute – would I bet my mortgage on it? No, I think there's a yeah. slim chance because yeah. they are on such a, a roll right now. But, you know, uh, like you said, they go as far as Lillard carries them. I, I think he might be able to steal a game, maybe two, from them, too, but yeah. at the end of the day, right, I, I, I think the Lakers move on. I'm going to go Lakers in six, though, so I'll say Portland okay. will take two. Okay, nice. Yeah, running with that hot streak, for sure. Yeah. All right, we got uh, the other LA team here. We got Clippers Mavs. So, uh, I, I mean, on paper, and, and just based on sort of what's happened, you, you'd like to sort of think that, all right, this is going to be a good, exciting series here. Oh, yeah. I, I, honestly, I, I don't think it's going to be close. I, I think, Really? Yeah. Interesting. Uh, you know, Clippers, if you look at how they actually played the Mavs in season, they beat them 3-zip. Um, you know, Dallas, the one thing they've really got going for them is their offense is finally really clicking, right? That's what, exactly, yeah. You, you had Luka nearly averaged a triple-double during yeah. the bubble. Yeah, uh, Porzingis, you know, he was second team all NBA in the bubble and he was, you know, 30 and 9.5 rebounds a game. So those two are, are, are definitely firing on all cylinders. And then, you, like you say, you've got some plug and play guys here and some shooters and Burks and Curry and blah, 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 that you can sort of play in. But at the end of the day, it, it's sort of a two-man show, right? They're, yeah. they're going to get as far as Luke and Porzingis will be able to take them. And, you know, if they happen to get sort of a, a second fiddle act to support that, 
great, all the better, yeah. right? Yeah. But, uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, though, um, I, I just think the Clippers are too deep. Uh, they're too strong. They, they've got probably the, the least exciting superstar you'll ever come across there in, in, in Kawhi. But he, he's the guy that's just going to go out there. He'll take care of business. He's not even going to crack a smile. He's going to take Drop. off the sneakers and go home. Right? Drop 40 and head home. Yeah, exactly. And that's just it, right? And, you know, as good as they've been, and I actually just found out today, they actually – so Dallas set the offensive efficiency uh, NBA record ever this year. So coming out of the bubble, they actually ended up uh, with 115.9 per 100 possessions to beat Golden State's record of 115 from a few years ago, right? So yeah. they're definitely firing on offense, but will they be able to get the stops that they need? I don't exactly. Think so. so I'm I'm going to go Clippers in five. I think Dallas takes one, but at the end of the day, you know, I I think this is going to serve a young Mavs team well for the future get some playoff reps in, but they got to add a few more pieces before they're actually going to go on a deep run. So with the Mavericks, I, I totally agree with what you said. I think they go as far as, as Doncic takes them. Um, and as, as mature as Doncic is for a 20-year-old superstar to be in this league, I think seeing Kawhi Leonard in front of him and seeing Paul George in front of him every single possession, let alone Patrick Beverly, Beverly every possession, will eventually get to him uh, over a seven-game series. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I do think if... The Mavericks are similar to the Lakers uh, when it comes to their supporting cast. If they get hot, they're an extremely dangerous team and can blow any team out. But it's just that consistency that lacks. Um, and, 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 and similar to Portland, where you have that one-two punch in Leonard and McCollum, you have Doncic and Porzingis. Um, but as we've seen time and time again, it's difficult for a young team to really beat a team with so much championship ped- pedigree and, uh, and, and talent and experience. And judging from last year, uh, never count Kawhi out. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> I'll go with, uh, yeah, I'll go with the Mavericks in five as well. Oh, so you're taking the Mavs to win or you're taking oh, sorry, the Sorry, 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 the Clippers in five, yeah, sorry. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay, geez, after all of that, and now I'm still taking the Mavs to win. <laughs> nice, nice, yeah. All right, well, uh, we, we, we've got Denver versus Utah here, and <laughs> this is one of the weirder series uh, for the Definitely. simple fact that you know, although Denver went 3-0 and against them in the regular season, the combined total that they won all those games by was 11 points. Yeah. So every single time these two teams meet, you know, it's a very close game. It's a, you know, defensive struggle. It's back and forth. It's coming down to the last couple of possessions. And they're super familiar with one another. So there's not going to be anything that the other coach is going to throw at them that, that they haven't seen. That they haven't seen, exactly. But that being said, like, Denver has had one of the weirdest bubbles of any NBA team. Like the, the only way I can almost describe it is if like some super advanced stats analytics nerd sort of got a hold of, you know, the, the, the front office's phone number and said, Hey, on paper, you guys would actually score more points if you had, you know, Jokic running point center for portions <laughs> of the game here. And they've got Bowl Bowl handling the ball for yeah. <laughs> stretches as well too. So it, 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 it's just all these strange looks where they're almost – like working thing kinks out and trying things out. It looks like that. Yeah, right? yeah that's what like, it looks like. Yeah, like, like things that they would be doing in either a practice or you know preseason or stuff like that. That they almost use the bubble for that, and they said that the yeah. heck where the seating is, we're, we're we're good with whatever. You know, let, let's just try some stuff. You know, and so the, the the one sort of bright spot from all of that is you know Michael Porter Jr. got a lot of playing time and definitely you know, he, it, it really shined. He's finally emerged too, right? And, you know, you think back a few years ago when it was his draft year, until he got hurt and had to have the, the back surgery and there were all these yeah. question marks about play. Like, he was the consensus number one pick, right? Yeah. And, and so you're starting to see that, right? You're starting to see it come through. He, he was second team all NBA, 22 points, 8.6 rebounds a game. Um, you know, I, I think that this is a series, too, where, you know, both teams would love to have actually had those home court advantages, right? Definitely. And, and two very tough places to play with some some loud spectators there. Um, but it, it, I just can't get a, a super good feel for this series simply because I don't know what kind of a rotation Denver's actually going to trot out there in a game exactly. that means something, yeah. right? 
is, is it going to be some version of what we've already seen with people, you know, just sort of playing off positions and these weird hybrid systems and all of that? Or are they going to go back to sort of, you know, more traditional what they had at the beginning of the year? I have no idea. So just because of that uncertainty alone, I'm going to say Denver wins it, but I'm saying the full seven. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a very fair uh, fair prediction. I, I, and the way it just looks for, for Denver, it just looks like a cluster of players. It looks like a pickup team playing together that's never played with each other before and they've had times where Jamal Murray's gotten hot they've had times where Jokic has carried the team they've had times where Michael Porter Jr. has and there's never been that one game that I've seen personally where that's like wow this is a full team effort everyone scored every all the starters have scored over 15 points and they've really put together a solid game it's always been a struggle and and going up against a very solid and structured Utah team that could be that one weakness that Utah tries to exploit. But how many assets does Utah have? When I think Utah, I think Mike Conley, uh, Donovan Mitchell, and Rudy Gobert. Mm-hmm. You have your big three. That, yeah. that's, those are you guys who are really going to push you. And wherever they go is how far you'll go. And at times, it's what looks like to be only Donovan Mitchell. Um, but And then you have Denver, which is – I don't think they have that out-and-out out star. You have Jamal Murray sometimes – going off then you have Jokic going off and Paul Millsap is still you know doing his thing so it's really tough to gauge who is going to step up on Denver um and 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 where they see the 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 series going but Denver is the fourth seed and they were second seed last year uh Don uh, Jamal Murray's coming off an injury had a really good return it was actually against Utah coming back and I think the series will be determined on who scores more points I don't think this will be well, – Well, usually basketball but, is oh. – <laughs> <I, I, laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I'm talking – I'm talking – it's going to be an offensive series and who can put the ball in the basket. Um, I'm saying the same thing over again. <laughs> but I'm trying to – it definitely won't be a defensive matchup, I think. Yeah. Whoever's going to be stronger offensively uh, will have that, that edge and whoever gets hot first – uh, is what will carry each game. And I think it'll be a lottery pick every single time. Um, oh, yeah. It's it's throwing darts at a board there as far as, like you say, who shows up for Denver on a, any given night there. And, you know, you, you'd like to think that it, it, there's some real tension, right, between Mitchell yeah. and, and Gobert when, when oh, yeah. COVID and everything sort of, oh. you know, I'm just going to touch every microphone, and, uh, uh, <laughs> right? So it, it looks like they've sort of worked through that. But – when you get put now in a high pressure situation where it's not just, all right, we got our little eight bubble games and, you know, whatever, right. It's no, we got a winner go home. Do we see that sort of flare up again? Absolutely. Yeah. Those those inner, those inner thoughts. And yeah. And and so that, that, that's why at the end of the day, there's just too many little things that, you know, I'm just not sold on Utah being able to pull it off there. So that's why I went Denver in seven, but yeah. Utah um, needs that extra piece, that one, one piece offensively to really compliment Donovan Mitchell. Uh, Mike Conley's done a good job writing the ship since, uh, since Ricky Rubio's departure, but they just need that one star um, that can really put the ball in the basket for them. Yeah. yeah. So I got, I got, I got Denver in seven as well. Beautiful. We seem to be on the same page for most of this here. So most of it's the first round. So. <laughs> this one right here. So we, we've got Houston OKC. So I'll, I'll let you give your oh, first two. In my opinion, this is going to be the most entertaining series. Russell I Westbrook heard. is out uh, in the first round of the playoffs, so will not be playing. Chris Paul has certain feelings towards the Houston Rockets after selling him, trading him for, for draft considerations uh, and cash considerations as well. And uh, he, I think he played the entire season with a chip on his shoulder, and he showed everyone that he's still the point guard, you know, um, and really putting the youngsters on his back and, and showing them, hey, we can do this together. We can really do this. Um, you know, looking at the, 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 resurg- the, the surge of Shea Gilgis Alexander um, and, uh, and Steven Adams playing really well. You know, people question whether Steven Adams could play with another point guard other than Russell Westbrook, but he's done a great job of it. And, can, and and it feels like James Harden is back to square one almost where he first started with the Rockets where you <laughs> give give James the ball and see if he'll win us the game. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and going up against an OKC team that has solid defenders. You're looking at uh, Andre Roberson coming off an injury, um, playing well. And uh, I'm thinking they have another – they have no, they don't have Jeremy Grant. But um, they had a few other long defenders who can really – cause trouble uh for 
uh, for the Rockets and for, for James Harden specifically. It's it's hard to talk about the Rockets without just mentioning James Harden, yeah. given the way they play. Um, and you know what? I, I, I think with, with, with Chris Paul playing as hard as he, as he is, I think there will be talk during the series, this is a bold prediction, I think there will be talk during the series of whether or not Westbrook can come back, similar to what Kevin Durant had to go through. I think there will be a conversation on that being discussed by the media because the OKC Thunder will beat the Rockets in six. Oh, wow. So we, we, we've got our, our, our first differing of opinions here. Yeah. So there we go. It only took us, uh, what, eight, all, all eight, <laughs> all eight to finally get here, but we got here. Um, you know, I, I like what you're saying, right? Uh, you look at the regular season, the Thunder actually led the, the, the season series two to one, yeah. right? And so they match up pretty well with them. And, you know, you, you've, you brought up the good point too, right? Like if this were normal circumstances, every single talking head show, every sports radio, every right. It, it would be right. Russ has returned to OKC. Chris yeah. Paul's returned to Houston. Da, 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 da. But it, it, it's almost been swept under the rug because of COVID and right. It's sort yeah. of a forgotten storyline there. Right. Do, do I think Russ has any real, you know, hard feelings about OKC? Probably not. Right. He, no. he, he was treated very well in his time. Yeah. there. Right? Does Chris Paul have some hard feelings about Houston? Says no. I don't, again, I don't believe him. Yeah. Right? Like it, he strikes me as the type of person who uh, who remembers things. Right? And oh, just definitely. Like, Tells them away, and you know, just, just, just look at how he, he works an officiating crew in any given game. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's hard to see on TV, right? Because they're constantly cutting away for uh, commercials. But if you ever see him in person, like, he is just nonstop at, at the him, at him the, and Kyle Lowry, those two six foot point guards, uh, always yeah. jawing at the refs. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you, you've got Houston with this weird hybrid small ball. Small ball. No one above six eight on the team. I think oh, six nine yeah. even. <laughs> I was gonna say I don't even know if it's that tall. There, it might be a <laughs> on paper six eight type thing, but like, yeah. Uh, they yeah they literally look like you know uh, what you would see at a at a game at down to the YMCA right you, yeah, you don't yeah. have that any super tall imposing you know centers or anything but but that that's just it for the style that the Rockets play it, it is you know how far can James Harden take us and he yep. is going to take fifty plus a night in this series right? oh yeah he, he's going to be launching them from well he's got to take Russ's shots. Yeah, well, well, that's just it, right? And, you know, I, I think I would have more faith in OKC sort of knocking them off if they had sort of that, that, that big in, in power, even whether it was a center or a power forward or anything. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I love Steven Adams as a player, right? Yeah. But he, he's not a center that can take over a game, right? No. He, he is he's defense and he's boards. He's going to clear the glass. That's, and, that's, that's what I think is going to be a big difference is the rebounding. Um, yeah. I don't think I think the Rockets are going to have a lot of one shot, one and dones, you know. Oh yeah, um, on yeah, offense. Uh, but, but but that's how they roll, right? Like, yeah, they, yeah. They, their entire team is based on you know, welcome to the track meet. Uh, <laughs> we're going to put up 140. If you can put up 142, congratulations, the game is yours, right? Yeah. So the, the, they're going to get theirs, and you know, there's just something about you know Chris Paul's playoff history that uh, d- doesn't exactly instill a lot of confidence in me. Mind you, d- does Houston's playoff history really instill a lot of confidence? <laughs> Not really either. But at the same time, you know, I, I think this is, again, going to be great for SGA. And I, I like a lot of the young pieces and sort of what they're building down there in OKC. And this is going to serve them really well in the future. Uh, but at the end of the day, I, I've got Houston in six. I think I'm going the other way here. Yeah. I, I just think at the end, of, you know, it, it, it's going to be the, the James Harden show. and. Um, you know, when, when you're shooting 20 plus free throws a game there, you, you're, you're going to be putting up some points there. And so he's mastered the art of, of getting to the line, even on some exceptionally uh, questionable oh, calls. Yeah. He's uh, got his, and his Texas three step that he's got going on now. <laughs> next to use uh, it's, it's texas seven step there. Oh, <laughs> yeah. awesome. well thanks so much for taking the time to sit down and talk hoops with us today but for, thanks for having me for those that are listening uh, that, that want to learn more about either yourself or, or your music you, you know you've got some great stuff coming up there uh, where can people find you or learn more about what you're doing absolutely so my name is ali i go by the soulful poet artistically i'm a poet spoken word artist and rapper if you'd like to learn more about me make sure to check out my instagram at ali the soulful poet uh check out my website has all my links there the soulful poet.com um and i'm on all streaming platforms uh, if you like to listen to my work um 
yeah, YouTube channel, The Soulful Poet, and make sure it's all one word. So The Soulful Poet. I'll do it this way, actually. The Soulful Poet. People see that reverse angle. But um, yeah, make sure to reach out to me. I always reply to all my comments and, uh, and DMs. So hope to connect with you soon. Thank you.